like i said my name is prasanna uh, i work in the field of information security uh, i work for thoughtworks and i my primary role is pen testing and uh, we also run one of the security communities within singapore called nal um, it's a free open source uh, meetup which people free to come uh, happens once a month mostly focused on security right now more towards pen testing but if someone wants to talk about hardware security we would love something like that we have zero knowledge and stuff like that now is awesome stuff like i know there's jtag but i don't know what jtag is someone could really talk and that would be really useful something we could learn uh this is a talk i had given some time back so i'm just going to repeat some of it some of the content i might choose to keep sometimes i may not want to do some of this so mainly what i'm going to concentrate is javascript what is obfuscation in javascript why do we need to obfuscate code and things around it and maybe a little bit of deobfuscation deobfuscation i can't show much on my machine here because most of the tools are windows specific i have not set up my environment today for a windows specific one uh, i'll give you the tool names you could use them it's pretty plain click and use them that's what they are and you can just download them point of advice there is if you go to the site it's called uh, kahoo security uh, google thinks that they serve malware today and use them with your own risk uh, and one more thing when you work with obfuscated code please do also understand it could be malware like let me give you a, a small hint of what an obfuscated code looks like this is a small part of an exploit that was developed uh, this was a challenge someone could break this and i was one of the guys who broke into it i'll show you some of the steps around it i'll sh share with you links i can even share you the actual challenge itself if someone is interested pick it up spend some nights break the whole thing out and it's fun it's really fun uh if you really think about it it's actually a very very simple function out there just going a little bit to the top uh, just to show you what does it mean obfuscation mean obfuscation means hiding something in plain sight end of the day it has to make valid javascript we cannot go away from it i can't write something random out there and think that it's going to execute that's not the point so obfuscation means it has to be still valid javascript but you do things a little different and that's what i'm going to be concentrating on i'm sure most of you here know what is javascript i'm not going to go too much into it but i'm going to be going into javascript a little weird way uh, everyone thinks how do you define a variable let's start with that let's make it as interactive as possible for name variable sure that's a very standard way okay. can you believe that javascript you can do it at least five different ways and that's the beauty of it the exploit is all about doing things a little different and that's what it is all uh oh uh, this is a very important thing that i wanted to discuss why do you need obfuscation uh from a from a very security point of view the reason we learn obfuscation is uh to break filters so let's say um uh, today you have a dot net application and you try doing a cross site scripting it will immediately throw back an error saying that dangerous payload detected so that means it's actually using a regular expression seeing your content and seeing how it works with it in fact this is one of the ways it's filtered and everyone has one of the today you write a rails app it has its own set of rules and there are multiple ways that these guys do it our job is to we still have to break it otherwise we don't get food at my table so effectively we write obfuscation is to just to break those filters uh how do you bypass those things uh let's say word eval how do you write something which is not eval you still have to send an eval and you have to if you learn, let's say you want to win the challenge or break it an eval has to be there but there is a program which is constantly looking for the word eval how do you so obfuscation is to send eval when it executes when the interpreter is executing it it will know it is an eval but this program that is checking and verifying it would not think it's an eval that's what the whole why we do obfuscation in the whole part social engineering most of the exploit packs have obfuscation on it all the time um we've had uh, a lot of people send malicious just to hack some of their friends it is always mostly obfuscated and most of the web exploits that you see today you would definitely know that it's an obfuscated one 
Kahoo Security has a lot of exploits that you could really go and play around with them. I could show you a few ways where you could play it with them safely. One would be definitely move it into a VM. and But VM also can be bypassed, so you want to be careful around them too. Uh, not going to spend too much time here. This is just to give you an understanding of what for JavaScript is. Uh, if someone didn't know what is JavaScript, there's a very plain JavaScript function there and why JavaScript is being used. But let's take some time and discuss this, uh, JavaScript strings. Like I asked variables, a string would have been x is equal to var, x is equal to within two quotes. The first and second one are the ones that people use the most, isn't it? If you want to define a, a, a string, str strings happen to be the most important component in obfuscation. The more ways you can create uh, strings, you're going to be more fun in it. Uh, so if you look at it, the second one, uh, sorry, the third one, this is basically uh, a regex expression. And what we are saying is, you put a plus sign and put two commas, uh, apostrophes at it, or basically saying it's a string. Automatically, the uh, browser, or in this case, whatever you're using it, will convert it into a string. The reason I say uh, whatever is, who implements JavaScript? Sometimes the browsers, and if you're using Node.js or someone that could be a V8 engine or whatever who's running it. So it's basically how JavaScript really works. So implementation could be different. Uh, one more point there around that is browsers also are different. So some of the functionality that works in one browser might not necessarily work on a different browser itself. Like some, uh, I was when I took this presentation today morning and I was reviewing through this whole thing, I realized some of the things don't work today. Uh, when I so within six months things are changing and I, the last I gave a presentation on this was around six months and I'm like whoa this is not working I would point it out I'll show you which one wouldn't work and uh, this one I am a string yeah. oh this is a very interesting one uh, what it does is you have an array representation of the string and when you put a uh, array accessor uh, so in this case it's an array accessor what it does is it automatically converts it into a string the output of this is a string. So it's back and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and the other one is the one above it is again a regex, and it, it has a default one which is dot source. If it really think of it, it's actually calling the same source property within itself, which is the uh, operators. Uh, so I will run through these a little faster. Then I'll show you some of the demos of what I've created, and we can see them actually in working. Uh, so how are operators useful is uh, the way JavaScript works with them. They, so you might put some values around, put a lot of operators in front of it. Even if it fails, the alert would still work or an eval could still work. So syntactically, even though it fails, uh, maybe I'll just quickly show you this. Why is this not going on? Um, so let's look at this. So if you see the... Uh, is it clear? Can I make it a little bigger maybe? Is this better now? So if you, if you notice here, what I've done is right in front of the alert. So let's say there is a uh, cross-site scripting filter which is looking exactly for the word alert. Because most of the pen testers test with alert. Uh, but that's not the real point. And alert just gives a point that I can execute JavaScript. Most of the people don't understand that bit. Uh, if you notice the first third line, I've added a bunch of uh, numeric operators in front of it. What do you think? Will it work? Will it not work? Uh, it looks inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> the best was some things in something like these. Look at this one. I'm doing a mathematical operation on it. Let's let's actually run this thing. First one. Second one, you see this one? It's actually one, it, it worked. And if you would have gone to the console and then executed, you will actually see the errors pop up. Ah, oh, damn, I've opened this in a different window. Okay, sorry, I would give you the files, try it on your own, this one. You would actually see that there will be interpretation errors. It will say that, hey, I tried dividing it with a uh, string. It doesn't seem to work. But it will still execute. 
that's the beauty of it you know that's how javascript has been built <laughs> um, moving forward comments um, there are standard ones your slashes and multi ones i'm not going to spend too much time there this is another very interesting thing it actually supports multiple encoding uh, you could actually have um, different and the best part is you could mix them up you could say uh, a put it in unicode l you put it in uh, hex and e in octal sure go ahead it allows you to do all those kind of magic so the reason why this is useful is if you really think of it uh, when i am building an exploit there i would mix all of these things together so that some parts of it is going to be in, so it's going to be take time for you to decrypt find out what is happening and really you should start thinking what is how do you break it there okay this is a challenge and what do you think is this there are actually two challenges uh, going to let you think this for a minute what, what do you think is the output of this Uh, the output is an object. It's actually the window object. It actually represents window. Imagine this you're in a browser and if if I call this out as a window, you're effectively saying I can run any window functions that are there. But this only means it's a window object. to weaponize this how would you weaponize this how would you actually if you really have to do this how would you weaponize this it it, it only means window can you not uh check the the properties of the window sure but then how would i reference this either i have to put this this x is equal to this and then go ahead and say x dot then only i can reference it out how if only this much is available to you where do you reference this if you say dot you can technically do all that but it's as simple as putting a square brackets and putting whatever function you want inside so eval is one of the functions so you put a square bracket put an eval there it will effectively do this this is one another way of doing the same thing If you notice this there is a little bit of a difference the first one i used an object in this i did not use any object at all object literal for me specific to be exact uh the other one is if you really look at this one there is a little bit an obfuscation i have started in the second one what do you think is it's eval it's actually eval this answers the question right so someone is really looking for the word eval and you send something like this no filter is going to break for this today they are all smarter than that they would total do dynamic analysis and say that no way this is not going anywhere but it would totally break at that level um <coughs> variables there are some rules around it it can be alpha numeric characters uh, numbers except in the first character so it makes a lot of sense so you just put a letter and put a bunch of numbers uh, underscores and dollars now this is another way uh, the one that i told you will not work is the one above the last it doesn't work today because regular expressions cannot be functions anymore on browsers it's effective the second last one the last one is a perfectly valid one um i'm sure you know the it's a tertiary operator so it's going to basically say what do you think is the output if it's the last one actually that's the one that's used by a lot of x is not very string x is going to become string um uh, all of the other ones are pretty much similar representations these are the ways that you could create variables so you, we generally know where x is equal to 1 or something like there are so many ways that you could create the same thing uh the one that is here uh, shit my this one this doesn't work anymore 
because it uh, at least the browsers are calling it out saying that hey regular expressions cannot be functions anymore if you really think of it it's actually a regular expression made it into a function and you're passing the value itself into it and it doesn't seem to accept that uh, the other ones are the built-in variables itself uh, the most important ones are your window the document and stuff like that but okay let's not go into this let's go back to my this one and let me run through some of the uh, okay let's look at this this is a very interesting one oh, it's too big you know what is happening here right no but that's okay okay fine <laughs> <laughs> so the first one i'm actually setting it as an object as an object literal and setting that an object literal is being created which has an object property with a value 123 that's what it set the best part being is uh, the second one is you have an object and you're trying to access the value of the object itself right how would you access it in real time you would only say object literal square bracket object property and the output would be one two three that's the expected one but in the one that i have created here the first one would work the second one would fail Uh, I'm only talking about these two lines. The first one is just a definition. So that has to be set. Why are the arguments 1, 2, and 3 now? Both have 1, 2, and 3, right? 0, 1, 2, 3? Why? Uh, that's the point. Uh, I would come to that a little bit. There is a reasoning why that. It, it is to break an idea. You generally think that object property should directly be after the square bracket itself. So think of it just as fillers. They, are, they have no real value to provide. Yes, because the execution is the most rightmost. And the first one is, is the rightmost one is the one that will work. That is why it's object property. There's a small comma here. So it effectively, so when it looks at the rightmost one, it looks at four and looks at the object. Hey, I don't seem to have a four here and it'll throw out an error. Um... Undefined, which is what I told, right? It doesn't get the value, and that's why it's undefined. This is also interesting. It's a similar one, but a little different in this. I'm not going. So the only difference here is it uh, in one, two, three. And then the next one is a whole group by itself. That's the only difference there. So if you... Right. Yeah. So, it's as so if you look at it, the one, two, threes didn't have any reasoning to be there. So you have a filter that's looking for something, you would still totally bypass. It's all about how do you make the system beat the system. Uh, let's look at the strings because this is a very important one. Uh, I'll have to, so if you remember, I had shown you the PPT, I had put the values here. Let's execute them and see them, the actual value execution. So it's a string. Second one is a proper string. But notice the first one, it came within the regular expressions itself. Third one is also a string. The fourth one is also a string. If you could just see all of them have valid string representations itself and that's a very important component there uh, multi-line infix i have shown you some of it oh, let's look at some encoding and these are important that that's valid oh, javascript right. if you look at it i have put this and this in unicode Um, let's see. 
you could deval it i am i think it will work but it's not look at that this is the same one but if you notice i've mixed up a few things i last time i showed you that how do i make a few execute this so the most important one that i wanted to share is so when you these are all different different concepts that are available uh, this is the fundamentals of what is available so how you build things out of this is where the fun is uh, sometimes it is fun in building it and most of the time my role is to break it it is you get a piece of code then you have to reverse engineer it and see what is happening at that so at that point of time you have to understand how javascript really is and how it works and stuff like that okay um okay i'm not going to spend too much time here let's go back okay other after this i want to show something called this do you think this is javascript i have seen people who make amazing stuff out of this way too much amazing stuff that's actually valid javascript let's take a minute to create this um i don't you're not having laptops otherwise i would have made you create a few uh normal array zero accessor ah. you remember empty. Yeah, okay. put an empty it will automate so if you notice this you got a string that's not sorry uh what is effectively happened is if you if, if you can literally representing man as that sequence of characters yes so what did we do we what i did was i created an empty array made it access an empty array did a mathematical calculation on it it says hey how can i do a mathematical calculation on empty arrays and it gives you out an nan array uh first it was a nan object then when i so if i add a plus square brackets to it which is what i showed you that it will convert to a string immediately which is what happened and it becomes a string by itself so what uh, do you, are you seeing where it, this is going so in the sense like it converts string to function and so on so forth yes so but what am i really bringing building up here i'm building the actual javascript functions itself right so what would come out of this you can't but what do you what's the use of this it's a string well, it's not going to match it typically like it's correct that is one definite thing there but you could do something more on uh, with this um you could pick out things out of it like the letter a is available for us now let's say someone is looking for the word alert and they have done everything your then your only objective available in life is alpha numeric js it's pain but this is how you do it so i showed you how to create the nan right so i'm going to skip that one i was actually going to do this see this is a little bit different from what i had done there so every time i have been thinking there is a little bit of a difference in how you create it end of the day it has to come to what it is uh idea is create mathematical mistakes and use that this was created by a gentleman called oxotonics the second number represents 1 so if you take that you you've created something nan there right it's a string so it starts with 0 0 1 2 you have one here make an array put this value inside it will evaluate it to be one so the string first value of the string 
a so the output is going to be a see that one so i put all thing in so i've grouped it into a bracket then apply, apply the one or it and you basically get a hey where are the others unfortunately i think it's hidden but let me show you without uh, this one here so if you're going to try l you have to create a false condition and pick out the l out of it uh e is definitely there in false itself how would you get r yes sorry yes I would go with true. It's much easier. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and T. Yeah. That's E, R, T. Now, what you need to do is you need to build all of them together, plus them all together. So you will get one big mass of alert with it. Then you send it to an eval, and you have a whole alert with you. As simple as that. to make sense if you don't want to do this there's a very interesting site i didn't name this it's called jsfuck.com <laughs> uh i don't know if i'm connected it no i'm not connected to internet but you could go to jsfuck.com put the word you want and it would create the alpha numeric for you it's a beautiful site i love the site but i explained it so that you know how it is really working so the the, the site to uh, create anything that you think Uh, yes pretty on pretty monthly most of it it's exactly doing the same job uh, if someone has an internet right now you could just see and play with it and type it and see it creates things like that pretty long sorry it's pretty long pretty long combination of yes it is because you, you you really have to take different operations find the letters in them and then go ahead and do it right just for an alert you have like all of those rounds yes so alert is a mix of all of this it starts from a plus l this whole thing is a l e r t so you need to club all of them together and it creates alert okay uh let me go a little into this one this is an actual challenge that was there on this is pretty old i did this in 2011 uh there was a a company called breaking point systems they have effectively been hired by, acquired by someone else now axia or someone like that and they had a put up a very interesting challenge this challenge is beautiful we should take a minute to discuss this challenge itself it was an obfuscated code and your job was to deobfuscate it as simple as that to start with uh but what it really turned out was a different way of exploitation itself the beauty of this exploitation was this is actually an exploit code this is a frame this this was a old firefox exploit but in a web based exploitation how do you know uh, which browser is coming so in a exploitation you basically set up a malware uh, malicious website and you expect people to come and hit it but you don't want to hit a chrome ex, uh, browser with a firefox exploit so these guys had thought of a very interesting hack it would take the user agent find out what is the user agent that is coming in and there were they had actually encrypted the uh, exploit itself if firefox was the user agent it would decrypt it and send the actual payload for everyone else nothing would happen that's amazing so the challenge was to you really break it out so i've just colored a little bit of things around here picked out only a small bit if you want i'll share you the whole challenge and you could have fun breaking it i can share my reading notes around it and you can pick it up um uh, let's see what actually happens here just the colored code i'm just going to take a minute to explain what it is doing here this is the simplest one i'm being lazy to show so i'm taking the simplest one thank you <laughs> i've kept the tough one for you <laughs> so think of it it's very simple what it is really doing is you take a string a uh, string of character code means the values are in hex convert it make it into an ascii character the output of it means it's an opera if opera is equal to minus 1 the result what is the result is it returns this the return is a key value 
so you have to decrypt each one of those ma- steps find out which was the valid one one giveaway right now for you it's firefox that way i couldn't find out it's firefox so i had to decrypt each one take the actual key run the zor and see if i'm getting the actual exploit or not the answer on that was firefox so if you today want to concentrate only on the firefox bit it will still work uh did that make sense how do you what so it's a little laborious process there are some automations that are there which i'll show you otherwise it's a pretty much manual work there are people uh, i can try and share your blog i chose the manual approach there were some colleagues who had actually uh, chosen an automated approach itself and i can try and find to send out that blog out and you could read around how people have really done it one very important thing that you really want to do in your browser is if you are doing an analysis is change the window eval object to an alert you know that's a beauty of javascript you can actually change the window eval and next time eval wouldn't run alert would be so what would happen is it will alert this so you could automate so something could have um, so think of it like this it is probably doing some things and then creating an exploit out there for you and you have changed it to the eval itself what would happen in that scenario is it will become a normal thing and it will pop out as a message box for you instead of executing it um uh, this is a link that you could really go uh don't use your browser right now here um uh, it has exploits so use a careful browser to work with it um uh, don't get infected you never know what is happening there uh the tool that you may want to use is one is called revelo the other one is called malzilla uh unfortunately is there an internet around here yes <coughs> okay i'll just quit uh, it's okay so the point is uh, malzilla is a web based uh, tool uh, sorry a windows based tool paste it choose different components around one or two and things around it and it probably will uh, automatically make the conversions for you uh pretty much at the end of it uh, the other one so to do obfuscation one very important concept is your understanding of javascript um not the plain javascript but really understanding at how much you can take the language to uh, and that's a very important one reverse sorry reverse <laughs> most important in my mind is imagination how how interestingly can you create stuff okay uh for people who is interested let me just show you a few things around so if you're interested in challenges i could share these challenges um i thought someone would carry a laptop and they can do it here itself it's okay i can find uh what do you think is happening here Yes. So it's going to be 
experience. You will need a console. To really, if you really want to break this, copy it each component, put it in your console, and that's how you could really work with it. I can give you a little bit of it. It's actually a window. It's the window which you mentioned in the chat before. Yes, the first one is the window. Oh, 4 double three is, it's, it's basically 2 double. So, what I would suggest is, copy it something like this. It was effectively only eval. It's just, the whole presentation, I was just showing you different ways of, yeah. you could really do things. So, one way is like this, and there are 100 ways to achieve the same thing. So, uh, I'm just trying to find the other challenge. Uh, Not to nine and then A to about V. Where's my actual challenge? I okay, uh, I'm unable to find my challenge. Uh, the challenge, exact challenge that I showed you there, the exploit that is there, I have it here somewhere. Got it. That's your exploit to work with. Really think about it. This is all nothing but Zord exploit itself. You really don't need it. The first bit is what you really need. So what I would totally do is quick things. Quick wins are, I copy this into a text pad and do something like this. Start building quickly what all needs. So the manual approach is find things that are quick to understand and make a quick understanding of what is happening in there and then go about building it. That's the, if someone is interested, uh, I'll share this whole text file with you. I'm sorry, I can't give it up really. It might have covered it, but because I could think of this, you could just break it down into... Uh, sure, there are tools. So, I use a very manual approach to do things, but definitely there are people who have automated, and that's exactly what I had shared. Uh, there are people who have done exactly using that way. The tools that are there, uh, one that's very famous is Malzilla, and he can basically build and do it. But the sad part is most of it is Windows based, and I'm not going to install Windows just to do this kind of work anymore there. Uh, so a lot of, uh, sort of JavaScript, ESD. Go ahead, we can all... No, but there's a lot of JavaScript ASD generators based in Node because uh, all these Node pre-parsers like Babel and stuff, that, that's something that's exactly what they do. They take ES6 JavaScript, they generate a syntax tree, uh -huh. and then they, parse, part, they, they translate parts of it back into ES5 and compile it back up. But totally would work. Yeah. It would be faster. Yeah. Um, so when I did a manual around this, this is two nights of sleepless work. Uh, now when I do it, I think it's like, I could go tuck, 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 but four years back I was like, it's pain, you just do one by one and but you, it, it taught me quite a few stuff around it. Uh, the best learning that came out of to me was the window object itself. How do you really get the window object and that was a shocker. I've never heard of what is a value of function itself. You, you don't use that anywhere. And sort of similarities to obfuscate C, there is or used to be a... Yes. But you don't have anything on eval. Yes. Eval is very, very important. Yes, eval. And that, actually, if you see around, there is an eval in, in here somewhere. Yeah. There is an eval. You can't really build anything valuable without an eval. 
but there are some very interesting ways there are do you know that the function constructor itself can play as an eval you don't really need the word eval the function constructor in javascript can be used to do eval itself so i've i've not covered that bit in this session the word eval itself can be covered in so many varieties of ways set timeout could do the similar job for you so you could really the beauty of it is the extensibility of the language itself and the best part that a lot of people know about uh, eval but a lot of people don't know that function constructors can be eval you, you really don't need to do things without eval itself uh these are some of the amazing people who do work on this uh mario hendrich and gareth hayes we need to be i need to put a thanks to them a lot of this work has been them and that's it pretty much and i have my email if someone wants the challenge i can forward it have fun and break it